with the uh, renewing the Renaissance and uh, starting a, a, the bust that we've been working for or working towards with the other studies. Uh, right now, I'm just I've just got to build up the body of the head. Oh, before I do that, I wanted to show you what we have here. We have two 45 degree angle half inch pipes, and then two two inch pipes, and then one four inch pipe, I guess that's what that is, and then a flange. So as you're preparing uh, your materials, you want to make sure you get two, two of these 45 degrees and two two inch pipes, and then one four inch pipe, and then a flange so that you can you can mount this up. And there's a reason I'm doing it like this. It's uh, it's so that the uh, the skull and the head, uh, where you have access to a neck portion where the pipe isn't coming straight down out of its chin. So that's why we're doing it like that. But it'll make more sense as we get going. But right now what we need to do is build that skull shape that we uh, covered in the uh, in the short video or uh, that of the drawing video that we did. So now we just get a large bulk of clay on there. and try and shape that in so that we can get our skull shape going. My goodness. Actually, I'm gonna... This was a little warmer before, but now it's a little, it's a little tougher. So, almost there. Just kind of loosening it up a little bit. This isn't going to be a one-to-one uh, -one ratio bust. It's just going to be about three quarters to save in material costs, and uh, it doesn't really necessarily have to be one-to-one, -one, which means uh, life size, 100%. We just need to get it close so that we can you can see the details and it'll make sense. So. In the video where we talked about the shape of the skull, that's what you really want to focus on right now is capturing that sideways egg shape um, and making sure that that's uh, close to where you want it. So right now we just really want to make sure we're capturing that sideways egg shape right here. Um, and then we'll work out the, uh, the jaw section but uh, for right now, let's just get this shape in. This is really important that you, you go back to your the older studies on this one so that we can get the, the shape uh, accurately depicted. I'm going to add a little more height to this. And I'm going to add a little bit of neck. To this piece and I'm going to also add uh, as it goes down past the, uh, the clavicle which is the two bones that are at the bottom of your neck there we're going to go ahead and, and uh, pretty much stop at that point there might be a little bit after but now I haven't I've just been thinking, you know, what I would I would determine uh, the sex of this person after I got it rolling. And I know you might be thinking, well, that seems like bad planning. But really, why the reason I'm doing that is because I want you to focus more on getting accurate human measurements that we've gone over several times now. Uh, it's more important than that right now. Just making sure that the head shape is correct making sure that the the face has that shape that we're looking for that's typical of a, of a human being which is that kind of oval egg shape so you'll start to see as we as we get this shape um, developed that it's uh, it's very similar to the drawings that we went over and uh, then we can start to Thicken the face if we want to add, make it a male, or or thin it down if we want to make it a, fin, uh, a female. Um, and those are just subtle changes, but the basic me uh, measurements are almost always the same. So, So 
So we're just trying to rough in and shape in a, a human head shape. I not cover it with my forearm too much. <laughs> You know, if you'll, you'll recall in our uh, discussion of the earlier um, measurements of the head when we were in that study, that the top of the head is also also needs to be shaped kind of like an egg from a top view, uh, rounder in the back, slimmer in the front, and then also from the front, rounder in the top, slimmer at the bottom, and from the side, that egg shape like this. So, like I said, not everybody's head is shaped like a, like a head, like a, like an egg, but it's pretty close to everybody has at least that rounded uh, form inside of their the structure of their head. So. Now I'm trying to work on symmetry a little bit to make sure that my my jaw and my face lines up correctly on this thing. So I'm slimming it down a little bit. And uh, a lot of times, because a lot of the work that I do, uh, a lot of the busts and things that I do are, are uh, you know, are produced as I go along. In other words, I don't really, I don't necessarily have to stick to a specific thing, especially if I'm doing work for my own studio. So I can, I can just start to sculpt and create as I go. And I kind of want you to be able to do that with this video as well, because I want you to feel uh, <clears throat> the, uh, I don't know, the creative process. So you can, you can say, oh, you know what, I think I'll make this a, a female face, or I'll make this a, an older woman or a, an older man. And so you can get into the creative process a little bit. Uh, and then you can start looking for references uh, of the age group of the person and the sex of the person that you're looking at doing and in that way again you're just creating you're taking elements off of them and 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 putting them into your into your sculpture and it's just a lot of fun and that's where the joy uh, and pleasure comes into sculpting in my opinion is is having the freedom to kind of create however you like so I'm starting at this point now as I'm working out the uh, the symmetry to look at the jawline and stuff. But what I'm gonna do with this piece, you can see it's starting to become a little bit more uh, accurate to a human head. I'm gonna draw a line and I'd like you to also do this because I think it'll help you keep that symmetry going right down the center. Just a nice vertical line right down the center of your bust from top to bottom just like that now I want you to work off that line to make sure that your symmetry is correct on both sides so if you see it needs more clay on one side than the other then go ahead and add that clay and that center line will help you to accomplish that that'll be one of the first of the measurement lines that we're going to use as we start to move through this bust A little bit better now. Alright, need to add a little bit of clay here on the jowl, even things up a bit. Alright. 
a little bit closer now. So we have, once again, the angle of the head, that egg shape right here on the side, or side view, that egg shape, and then the jowl that comes down. And then we have the neck. building that neck up there a little bit. Right now it looks like it's really slanted back so I'm going to be adding more material up um, in the front of that. There's a scraper I had. A second. I'm kind of pinching a little bit to kind of get this structure of the chin. You can see that. All right. Now I'm trying to thicken that neck up so it's realistic and matches the piece a little bit. I have an idea of where I'm going to go with this piece. I, I think that. Uh, the direction I, I think it'd be fun to do. I think I'm going to go the direction of a slightly older gentleman just because it has more character, it's more fun to sculpt. Uh, so, but again, feel free to go any direction you like on yours. You can do a lady's face, a male's face. Um, because I'm only doing one here, it's kind of I have to choose between them, so it's really your choice on who you. Uh, want to sculpt but you know it's going to be it's, it, there's going to be challenges regardless on any direction you go and uh, just make sure whatever you choose you go ahead and get as much reference as you can that that uh, effectively helps you develop this piece in the direction you've chosen so Correcting the symmetry on the back of the head here, uh, shaping the back of the skull. Um, the back of the neck, just for for a quick reference, kind of drops down to a pinch point when it comes down to the back of the skull. Uh, if you if you'll notice in the back of your own skull that you have, uh, I'll try and do this in a kind of a geometric form so you can see the angles I'm talking about here kind of comes together like that, like an oval, uh, and this being the thinner portion of the oval on the back of the neck. So, And then also, just making sure your symmetry of your head is correct. Mine is a bit off on the back here, so I'm just trying to correct that as quickly as I can. So again, I need to add a little bit of clay on the other side. This, this is really the time to just make these little corrections because you don't want to have to go back and worry about symmetry later on when you're adding eyes and ears and nose and all that stuff. You want all this stuff to be handled in advance. Uh, it's kind of like building a good foundation and that's what we're doing right now. Just building that foundation for this head so that uh, all the aspects of the head will be even and correct 
as we move into the next phase, which is detailing and, and placing the features on the face. So, okay. I've noticed I've taken off that line in the center. Um, I'm going to draw another one. And uh, as I banged it up a little bit. All right. So fairly quickly I've been able to kind of develop a, a skull shape. It's hard to see this when somebody has hair. So your model, if she's got a lot of hair, it's really sometimes difficult to see the natural shape of the skull. So that's why it's just better to go off reference material because the skull is so similar one to another. Sometimes you'll get radical differences, um, uh, but for the most part, it's pretty close. And uh, so. So again, there we go. So I'm going to draw that line again on the front of the face. And then I'm going to start working on the geometry of the mouth and the nose and the eyes. And we'll work out the order as we go here. So, hope that looks a little closer. And kind of establishing the jawline a little bit. Okay, so now remember the four quarter rule that we use on the face. So first let's draw the line on. Make sure that that line is crisp and clear on your sculpture. So there it is on mine, right up the middle. I think that's pretty straight. Maybe a little bit off on one side here, so let me just Correct here. All right. Now, um, what I want you to do is draw the uh, the halfway point from the top of the crown to the bottom of the chin, where the halfway mark is. And you can do this by eye. I, I'd almost prefer you did it that way because, like I said, the human head has got small variations, and so. Uh, that actually makes it more realistic, in my opinion, to just not be super anal about it. But let's just go ahead and draw that halfway point. I think that's about right there. That halfway point right there is actually the pupil line. So if, you're, if your subject is looking straight ahead, that's where their pupil is going to be. All right. And the reason why I want you to do that is because we're going to remove this material right across here at the pupil line and slightly above it. So we need to get a tool that will help us to do that. I have this tool right now that I'm using, which is kind of a, uh, a scoop. It's got kind of sharp edges on it. So we're going to use that to remove this material right at this pupil line right here. And you want to go out to the edge of the socket. So in other words, to the edge of your eye, you feel your socket. That's where we want to take this pupil line to, or the halfway point, right to there. Then we want to go ahead and dig that out to where it's almost 100% flat. In other words, from the edge of the from the edge of the eye socket to the edge of the eye socket, we want that to be a straight line, and we want no impediment. So I'm going to push in there, just like that, just like that. And I'm going to just take my tool here. I'm just going to pull this down. <laughs> okay, just like that. All right. And you might be thinking, wow, that seemed like a, a very dramatic change in the face. But really, it's, uh, it's what you got to do. So right now it seems like, wow, there's a big flat spot right here. And you're right. So that's going to get filled in with nose and the fatty tissue around the nose. 
and then it'll all start to make sense. Just remember these two points here and here, which being the ha that that pupil line, making sure that's horizontal and level, right there like that. And then we can draw that line back in again, making sure our face is level and that this vertical line is straight. Okay, so drawing that line across again. All right, so kind of like we're just doing this almost like we're, we're doing in geometric segments and then smoothing them and rounding them. So there we go. Okay, so now we've got that. And now we know from our prior measurements that we did on the earlier studies that the top of the brow right here, that I've gone up above that center line, <clears throat> the top of the brow right here is where the eyebrow would be, or the, uh, the hair on your eyebrow. So I'm not going to accentuate that too much because we're still sculpting the face and making details and stuff, but I'm just going to put a little eyebrow there. That is the one of the four quarters or the three segments of the head starting at the top of the or the at the hairline and I'm putting the hairline about right here uh, I think that's about right right there two and then three which is right at the bottom of the nose we want to keep them all the same length so we can pretty much uh, just you know, use this tool right here just to measure off what that is. There, to there, to there. Okay, so I need to add a little bit of chin to this piece. And, which seems kind of obvious when I turn it sideways. <laughs> so, that's the good thing about these measurements is that they really help you keep things straight and help you work out your dimensions. And uh, I use them all the time, and I really am glad I know them. But it really didn't take a lot to learn them. It's just uh, just recognizing points of reference, like just below the, no the nose and at the eyebrow and the bottom of the chin, those being really important reference points. So, yeah, it looks better already just adding that little bit of length. Okay. Making sure my symmetry is not too screwed up by my changes here. I'm kind of uh, working those in. Okay. Okay, let's see if our measurements are closer now. Bottom of the nose, just underneath the nose right here, to the eyebrow, to the hairline, and then to the bottom of the chin. So let's see if that's close. Right there, right there. It's right on the money. Right there to there, it's right on the money. So now we have those three lines worked out, and that makes it easier for me to start the next process of adding a nose. Now we're going to work on uh, we're going to work on the thickness of the cheeks and the cheekbones and all that stuff in a little bit. But right now I just want to make sure we're getting the placement of the nose. Where exactly is the mouth going to go? Just so you know, from the bottom of the chin to the bottom of the nose, the halfway point is right there. That that little mark of the lip. So if you take the lip, that line at the bottom of the lip, that's that's the halfway point. Slightly above that is where the mouth opening is, and then slightly above that is the top of the lip. So that little space between the bottom of the nose and the top of the lip is all you have left to work with. But that's typically how it is with most people. So once again, measurements helping us figure this stuff out. I'm uh, 
bringing that in a little bit so that the chin looks more natural and I'll give you a, a side view of it now okay and then we'll do some measurements on the side of the head as well in just a few minutes but right now just trying to get the uh, geometry correct for the face okay all right so now that we have our three points of reference one two three and then the bottom of the chin now we can go ahead and work out our nose so i'm going to get some clay ready now the point just below the eyebrow line right here there's the eyebrow line right here is where it starts to dip in <clears throat> to go to that that uh, divot just above the bridge of your nose so that divot is right here that also is on the same line as your pupil line so when I put in this nose and I'm just forming a simple kind of almost like a teardrop shape to put in here I'm not using a lot of detail I'm just creating a little shape like that which is a little teardrop shape for the start of the nose and I can add take away from as I go but this will at least get me started so we got that in there and uh, kind of work it in there I don't really I'm not so concerned about uh, the thickness of the nose or anything at this point I just want to get the general shape worked in I feel his cheekbones need to be more accentuated so I'm gonna wait a minute and get this nose in and then we'll start to work that stuff out as well Now that crux between the eye and the, uh, the nose right there is almost the exact same if you were to cut into it, it should be almost the same level as the edge of the eye socket. So that's going to give you your depth of, of the eye is in that little spot. So keeping that clear is, is a good idea. It just really makes it look better. So again, I'm just forming in a basic nose strip shape right now. and give it a little bit of character but mostly again I'm working on symmetry so look at your piece from the front and make sure that you're lining up correctly okay if I was doing a female bust I wouldn't be so concerned about adding a lot of cheekbone to this piece uh, in fact I'd be adding very little in fact the, the more subtle the better and then that the nose would be more of a, a sloped shape going inward rather than having an outward shape like a male's nose. Just a pointer for those of you doing a female face. So now we've got the basic nose shape in there, but we're thinking, okay, that doesn't look right. It just looks like a it just it's missing something, and what it's missing is this little bit of uh, fatty tissue right here on either side of the nose now again I'm doing an older gentleman just for fun <laughs> uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to make that uh, a little more prominent than probably in most people but I, I want to do it like that just because I think it's a more interesting face so part of the creative process I guess all right, so I've got that little bit of fatty tissue in there on the sides of the nose. I haven't added the nostrils yet. Once again, I've only got the core center piece of the nose done and a little bit of the front bridge of the nose and, and the tip of the nose, but I haven't started working on the nostrils yet. I'm going to hold off on doing that for a few minutes here until we, we have this, the face structure kind of worked out, and that'll be part of the detailing. So... There we go. All right. So now we can go ahead and start on, for me, I'm going to add a little bit on each cheekbone. Now, I like it when the cheekbone is prominent to the side right here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and add a little bit of cheekbone right here. 
Uh, right now you're probably thinking, gosh, where am I going to put the ears and how is that all going to work? We did go over some of those uh, measurements for the ears, but if you just hold off a little bit on those, we'll get that done a little bit later in this video. So once again, cheap bone. After you've done a lot of faces, I think you'll start to uh, recognize why I'm doing a, <laughs> a face that has more texture and a little bit more angles to it. It just makes it a lot more fun and enjoyable to sculpt. Okay, so now we have a bit of a, a nice profile going. Um, the forehead is uh, pretty much rounded. So um, right now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and push back some of the material right here and create a brow. Uh, make it more interesting. So I'm kind of pulling some material forward and creating a brow line. Uh, and then I'm going to take some of that material off right there. Okay. Now I've kind of ruined all my lines. So just for your sake, I'm going to go ahead and, and reapply those eyes or those lines in there. Oops. I'm really off on that line. Let me try that again. Okay. Now, chin. Okay. So now we have that line. Once again, that was the 50% line, 50% meaning halfway up the head. And then we have the, uh, we have the, the nose, the measurements just below the nose right there. And then to the bottom of the chin, the brow, to the hairline. Okay. So now... Just kind of uh, making sure that I'm showing you where that li the line is that separates the jowl, the bottom jaw, from the rest of it. So you can make the, the jaw a little more prominent. Okay. Okay. I haven't begun lips or anything yet. Like I said, I'm still working on the nose and the cheeks a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and and add the nostrils. And all I did was just take a clump of clay and put it on there. Put it on the other side. Just line them up, make sure they're symmetrical. The clumps there. And I'll take a tool that I like using for this kind of work, which is this one. It's kind of a scoop. So I'm going to go ahead and shape that nostril in. And on the other side, do the same thing. Always make sure you're checking your measurements. It really, uh, it's depressing to get all the way through a bust and realize that because you didn't build a good foundation in the beginning that everything's all askew and your eyes are not level and everything's not working. So. It's a good idea to always check to make sure that things are level and that your angles are right because I hate having to repair later on when you're moving through your bust. So, okay, we have general shape there. Okay. All right, what I'm trying to do is just figure out where his skull is, exactly the shape of it, the, the, the cheekbones, the eyes, around the eyes, the, the bottom of the, uh, the, 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 the jawbone, how that fits in there. Once I do that, once I get those accentuated a little bit, then I can start add fatty tissue and, and, uh, and I can make him uh, 
I can I can adjust the face to how I want them to look and that's important that way you get that original geometry down first before you start really going crazy with detailing so now on the side of the head now if you recall all those same lines apply which was the quarter lines that we did the hairline going back and I'm going to try and demonstrate this clearly the hairline going back the brow line the bottom of the nose line and then the bottom of the chin if you can see those a line here a line at the hair bottom of the nose and the bottom of the chin and then you go back to the halfway point which is between the, from the back of the skull to the front of the brow right there the halfway point it's an important measurement right there because that's going to help you figure out where your ear sets now your ear sets in the geometry between this part this line the brow line and the bottom of the nose so right in here is where your ear is going to be it's literally going to start at that point right there so i'm going to go ahead and form in some basic ear shapes use some of this clay sitting around now what i do first is just make two balls of clay that are right about the same time excuse me same size so um, that way you're using the right amount of material for each year um, so that's about that's about right I'm going to take those I'm going to draw my geometry on this side of the head there's that brow line there's the nose line bottom of the chin and then the hairline right up here okay so I know that the halfway point is right about here all right so now I know where I can put my ear right there I want to stay within the confines of that that line if I go any bigger than that then it's then that's a detail that I wanted to add to it. In other words, I want to make it more characteristic of somebody with really big ears. <laughs> so, there, just generally shaped in an ear shape. Push a little bit closer to the side of the head. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this line. Right there. Okay, making sure my symmetry is good. I'm checking the tops of the ears. That's where the brow lines up. Just like that. Making sure that's shaped correctly. And there we go. Now, just in front of the ears right here, some people have uh, it actually, the material on the sides of their heads, and I'll use another word for it, but right at that line there, the 50% line, you can sometimes carve that out a little bit because some people that's the side of their face div, dips in a little bit and then makes way for the ear at that point so i'm going to do that a little bit just so you can see it's, it's with some people but not everybody if they're a heavier person like me uh the, the material or the, the fat builds around and comes forward so if it's a heavier person this point will stay almost the same where it connects with the ear and then it'll start to come out for a heavier person like myself so all right so anyway a thinner person doesn't have so much of that it goes right into cheekbone you actually see the cheekbones there typically so then behind the ear we discussed this before these two little lumps i like to add them because it really does kind of change the shape of the ears which is the mastoid process right here behind the ear I'm not trying to get too technical on this piece. I just want it to be uh, a pretty accurate head for for you as you're working through this. 
that you have a good starting point. So I'm building that lump there behind the, uh, the earlobe. And there we go. It's not much, just a little bit. All right. Okay, so now I've got pretty much a pretty close to accurate general basic head shape to work with here. Um, there's a few little things I'll do on this piece just to make it look more realistic, which I'll add a little bit of uh, material to the top of the, the lip here and build out the lip a bit a little bit. that down a little bit because I want it to be some fatty tissue on either sides of the chin. So now we're starting to move towards uh, the detailing of this guy on this piece and so uh, if you've been following along and sculpting on your own piece um, this is where in my opinion it starts to get more fun. And, um, so there I've added some texture to his lips or a little bit of thickness there. Made him poke out a little bit. Give some character. All right. Now we can start figuring out how we're going to work the eyes on this, this piece. So fix this chin up a little bit. Okay. Now with the eyes, make sure that you have your your eye socket defined. So what I'm going to go through and do is if this because I'm doing this person almost like he's younger before he's older, I do that for a reason because I don't want the tissue on the face to throw off the natural shape of his skull. I want to see that so that I can I can make sure I get the eyes, the eyeballs in the right points and the right measurements and I can get the, uh, the cheekbones in the right point and the right, right measurements. All these are building blocks to push towards that final piece where you're going to add thickness and fatty tissue and all that stuff to it. So don't let don't let your desire to move into the creative part of it take away from the geometry part of it that's so important that you have that foundation before you start that. So there, I've, I've built in, or I know now, I've clearly defined the socket shapes. The edge of the socket right here, the edge of the socket here, and good. Those look pretty good to me. So now I can take a little bit of uh, clay, just a small amount, because I want this guy to have kind of deep set eyes. And I want to place those right in the center of the socket shape. Um, this again can be done with measurements, but I almost can prefer you went with how you want the piece to look. So uh, again, halfway between the edge of the socket and the inner portion of the socket, halfway. So we want to add that right there. Now, because the eyeball is actually, uh, it goes more into the top of the head than in the bottom, the, the socket, um, I start building upwards. In other words, I'm taking the material and I'm pushing it upwards a little bit to make it look as if the ball is actually more in the top part form. I'm not worried about I'm not worried about uh, eyelids or anything else right now. Just want to get the geometry right and get the shape right of the eyeball in there. Because I'll do that stuff afterwards.
Okay. Now we can start to see the head really starting to look like a person. Um, but still no details have been really forced into the piece yet. It's still just structure. Um, okay. So, there we go. All right, we'll go ahead and, and pause here and let you catch up. Again, remember the measurements. Remember your symmetry, the point of the eyes. And we're going to do some more measurements in a minute, but for right now we'll take a break and let you catch up on all this. And then uh, that should do it. Thanks again for visiting us and going through the process of of the introductory to sculpting the human head. I really enjoyed doing this with you and I hope that you learned a lot.